I'd like to share with you a couple of secrets that most people don't know in this industry that can make you go really, really fast. Now, you don't have to do what I'm showing you. What I'm about to show you, you don't have to do it. It's completely up to you. I'm going to show it to you, and if you do it, it'll quickly increase how fast your group grows. But again, you can do this at your own pace. Does that make sense? Okay. The first 48 hours, the first 48 hours is the most important in this business. The first 48 hours. Now, if a new person joins today, their first 48 hours is the most critical time in their business. If you have been involved in Jeunesse for one month, the next 48 hours is the most critical time in your business. If you've been involved in Jeunesse one year, the next 48 hours is the most critical in your business. If you've been involved two years, it's the next 24 to 48 hours that's the most critical. You want to get into a mentality of working in 48 hour segments. Does that make sense to everybody? Everything happens within 48 hours, especially with a brand new rep. So what I'm about to show you, whether you've been involved two years or just one day or one week, you do the same thing every single 48 hours. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now, here's a rule. The faster you go, the faster your group goes. How many of you would like to reach your goals faster rather than slower? Okay, so you have to have a 48-hour mentality and you have to approach this. Now, what do we want to do in the first 48 hours? Understand this. In the first 48 hours, it's very, very important you do these two things. Again, if you've been involved two years, the next 48 hours is the most important for you. First, you will have to identify what's called your 10 best. 10 best. The 10 people that are the most successful, most motivated people that you know. The people that you are sure will never do this business because they're far too successful. They have no time whatsoever. Does that make sense to everybody? That's your 10 best. And I'm going to show you a strategy with this. The second thing you want to identify with every next 48 hours, with every new person, or with you right now, is what's called your 10 easiest. 10 people that you have a relationship with that they're probably going to look at the business just because you said so. They're probably going to try the products just because you asked them to. They'll probably show up to your home or your office to listen to somebody speak just because you have that relationship. So 10 people you're close enough with that you ask them and they will take action because of that relationship. Does that make sense? The third little step here is what's called a private business reception. I'll explain this more later, but a private business reception, the way we built really, really fast was we would have every new distributor or every distributor that had been in one month, two months, five months, we would have them put together a group of people at their home or their office. People they knew, people they had a relationship with, could be the 10 best, could be the 10 easiest. And they had those people come and we did a short, intimate presentation, about 35 or 40 minutes for their key people. Does that make sense to everybody? We were doing this every single day. Sometimes I was doing five of these in one day. Five different homes, five different offices, packed with people for all the new people. And we had this going over and over and over again. Now, the key is, your 10 best, your 10 easiest, for those who want to go fast, a private business reception, which I'll explain later, and you do this in the first 48 hours. What we found is if you do this, by the way, can we get the air on more, higher? You guys hot? Yeah. Me too. So what we found is if you focus on the 10 best, the 10 easiest, especially if you do a private business reception in the first 48 hours, you'll find a minimum of two distributors and two customers. 
you'll find a minimum of two distributors and two customers. How many of you ever studied statistics? I was a, I was a marketing major with a minor in economics and statistics. So I learned to, to do the numbers. And if you approach this with what I'm showing you, 10 best, 10 easiest, 48 hours, private business reception, you will have two distributors typically and two customers in the first 48 hours. Now, why is it important to do this fast? Okay, let's say we have a new rep. Let's say Ron's my new rep. Okay, the first thing I want to do with him is I want him to make money. That's the first thing that I want to do. Why do we want him to make money? Well, his friends and his family do not care how much money other people are making. They don't care how much money, you know, Victorine is making in the industry. They don't care how much money anyone else is making in the industry. They only care how much money he's making. And most of those green apples, one of the questions they're going to ask, have you guys got this already? Are you making money yet? How many of you got the are you making money yet question? Now keep your hand up. Look around the room. Look around the room. This is everybody who got the are you making money yet question. That's about 80 or 90% of the room. We need to get your new representative in a position to make money right away. We need to put them in a position to earn money their first week in the business so that when they're talking to their people, they have the answer. Are you making money yet? Absolutely. That needs to be the answer. We need to do that in the first 48 hours. The second reason we have to do that for the new representative in the first 48 hours is because of their belief system. Understand, when you first get started, you have possibility in your mind. You have an idea of what could be. You see what could be possible for you. But it hasn't yet happened yet. So for the, every new representative, we need to get them money so that they see it works. Listen, when I, when I got started, I was making a lot of money in real estate. I was selling over 100 houses in Los Angeles every year. I had five full-time assistants. So I was making great money. I didn't really need to make more money. But when I got started in the industry, my first check was $90. And I was so excited for that $90. You know why? Because I realized it worked. I realized that if I could make $90, all I had to do was go find more red apples and that check would go up. And it would keep going up. Does that make sense to everybody? How many of you remember when you first got your first income from Jeunesse? Raise your hand. Were you excited? Yeah, even if it was small, you were excited, right? Because it worked. That, that belief, that belief is what we have to give to every new person. So we need to do that in the first 48 hours. You put them in a position to earn money in the first 48 hours, they get a check by the, within the following week, now their belief system goes up, they can answer those green apple questions, and now they approach everything a lot more confidently. Does that make sense to everybody? Make sense? Okay. Now, this is probably one of the most important things you'll ever learn right here. Okay? This right here. Let's say this is what it takes to be a superstar in the business. Let's say these characteristics are what it takes to be a superstar in the business. Okay? So, someone to be a superstar has to have huge motivation. Someone to be a superstar has to have credibility. They have to have great people skills. They have to have the ability to influence others. They have to be somebody who is good for their word with integrity. So let's say... This line represents a superstar. Everything above the line is a superstar. Everything below the line is not a superstar. Does that make sense? Okay? So, with this, I'm going to give you a scale. On a scale of 1 to 10. 10 is the highest you can achieve on these characteristics. 10 is the most motivated, the most credibility, the best contacts, the best ability to influence others. So that 10 represents the highest possible superstar with the highest characteristics. The 1 represents the person that has none of these characteristics. Make sense? Now, for this example, let's say you're an 8. Let's say all of you are a number 8 for this example. So you have the basics of what it takes to be successful at a huge level in Jeunesse. Now, because we're human beings, 
All of us are concerned with looking good. Would you agree? Yes. We're human beings. We have what's called an ego. So all of us want to look good. So every person has the same symptoms of an ego. We all want to look good. We all want to sound good. We all want to feel good about ourselves. We all have insecurities. We all have all of that going on. It's part about being a human being. Make sense? Yeah. You're an eight. And you're a human being. And you want to look good. So, when you start making your list of the people that you want to talk to about this business, right away, what do you do? You start thinking about people that will listen to you. You start thinking about people that you can talk to, and they're going to take a look just because you said so. You start thinking about people that you can make every mistake, and they're still going to look up to you. You start thinking about people that respect you. How many of you have done this? Make sense? You don't know you do this. You didn't even know you do this. I'm going to show you something you're not even aware of. What happens is you call the people that you feel comfortable with. So you call people that look up to you typically. So if you're an eight, you're going to call someone who's a seven. And the seven gets involved. And the first thing they do is they want to look good too. They want to call the people that they feel comfortable with. They want to call the people that they know will listen to them. So they start calling the sixes. And the sixes want to look good too. So they start calling the fives. Who call the fours. Who call the threes. Who call the twos. Who call the ones. And finally we get down to Uncle Avi. Right? <laughs> Uncle Avi, who's been unemployed for 37 years. Right? Who lays on the couch... Complaining, watching soap operas, drinking beer, talking about the good old days 37 years ago. Right? How many of you know an Uncle Avi? <laughs> right? So we think that we're going to magically call Uncle Avi and he's going to listen and he's going to immediately jump up out of nowhere and say, Oh my gosh, my life has changed. This is the best thing I've ever heard. Thank you. And go crazy, right? We think that's going to happen. Well, most of the time, most of the time, we call people that we think will listen to us, or we call people that we think need the business. How many of you have done this? How many of you call people you think need the business? Keep your hands up and look around the room. Look around the room. Everybody does this. It's natural. I did it. You did it. We all do it. Here's the rule. Do not prejudge anybody. You want to call everybody. You want to give this possibility to everybody in the planet. You want to call the people who you think need this. Give them a chance. You want to call the people you think really need the money or could use this. You want to call everybody. But I'm going to show you a secret. I'm going to show you a secret. How many of you ever heard the statement, past success is a good indicator of future success? Your past success is a good indicator of your future success. If you want, if you want something done, typically you give it to a person who's busy. Because they find a way to get it done fast. Let me ask you a question. If you were going to start a multi-million dollar business, who would you want to run the company? Would you want Uncle Avi? Or would you want someone who's successful, motivated, sharp, intelligent, who has a track record of success to run your multi-million dollar company? Now, again, don't prejudge. Give every person the opportunity to become something that they're not or become more than they can be. However, what happens is most people call people that may need it desperately. And then they call people who need it desperately. And they call people who need it desperately, who call people who need it desperately, who call people they need it desperately. And pretty soon, you're in a group of people that are not motivated. They don't connect well with people. They don't have a lot of credibility. They don't have a track record of success. And you think you're going to build a huge team with these people. Does this make sense to everybody? Okay. Here's the thing. How many of you notice that when people are struggling for money, they typically are more of a rotten apple? Yes. Right? Yeah. 
When life is hard, people typically become a little bit more negative. We've all been there. When life is frustrating, people are frustrated. They're, they're not necessarily open to new things because they're worried about survival. They're worried about paying the bills. They're worried about where they're going to get food. Let me tell you something. I was at a point in university where my father, I didn't know it, but he had claimed me on his taxes. And so I was supposed to get what's called a Pell Grant, which was 2,500 US dollars. And I went to collect my Pell Grant in university. And when I went to collect it, they told me I couldn't get the money. And I asked why. They said, because you're, you've been supported by your father. Well, my father hadn't been living with us since I was 11 years old. So I'm thinking, what do you mean? I haven't been, I haven't been living with him. They said, well, he claimed you on his taxes. So my father claimed me on his taxes even though I wasn't living with him. So I couldn't get the money. So that was $2,500 I couldn't get. So for the next three and a half months in university, I didn't have money to eat. My mom didn't have money. My friends didn't have money. I was actually going through the trash cans to get, you know, in the United States you have Pepsi and Coca-Cola and everything. I was going through the, the trash cans without telling anybody so I could get five cents for every can. And then I'd take those cans back and cash them in so I can get maybe soup for the day or pizza for the day. And I did that for three and a half months until the summer came and I got a job in the summer. So my attitude at that time, I tried to stay as positive as I could, but I was going hungry. So my attitude wasn't like here. I wasn't open to new possibility. I was worried about if I could eat for the day. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm not saying don't call everybody. What I'm saying is, most of your rotten apples are going to be people that are struggling heavily right now. People that really need this the most. Give them a chance to be a red apple. Give them a chance to see the possibilities. Give them a chance to try the products. But the secret is your red apples are here. Your red apples are right here. The people that you think will never do this business will be the first ones to be red apples. The people you think don't have time to do this business are going to be your red apples. The people you think are too successful and they don't need the money, they're going to be your red apples. Why? They're already successful. How many of you have noticed successful people always make time for things that are worthwhile? Successful people are always tapping into their network to get what they want. If they want theater tickets, they're going to call a friend and pull a favor to get those tickets. If they want a good deal on a special restaurant, they're going to call a friend that they know and see if they can get a special deal. How many of you have noticed this about successful people? They're always going to their network. They're always going to their contacts and using those relationships between each other to figure out how they can get what they want. Make sense? So when you bring them something like this, the money to join is not an issue. The money for the products is not an issue. They already make money. They're already super motivated. They're already successful. They're typically more open. These people are typically more open to new things. These people are always looking for new ways to make more money. They're always looking for ways to diversify. Usually you have successful people, you'll hear they're in two or three different ways of making money, two or diff different ways of income streams. They actually are more open and they join faster and they do more. So the people that you think will never do this business you need to not prejudge them as well. You need to talk to your nines and tens, your best people, the people that you are sure will never do this business. The people like Iran, right? How many of you know him? Do you just tell everybody what you your, what you do before? I was a lawyer uh, having an office in Tel Aviv, employing over twenty people. Office of 20 people. Yeah. How many hours a week did you work? Uh, 25 multiplied by 8. <laughs> so he was working every single day? Yeah. Right? 7 days a week? Six uh, days a week? 7. Yeah? Also Saturday, always preparing and so on. Okay, so you had no time. <laughs> right. Why did you choose to get into this industry? Because I wanted time, that I wanted to have time to go to Toilets. <laughs> and what's happened since you got into this industry? 
my whole mindset changed. I, after two years in this industry, it was making more money than law offices with 23 employees in Tel Aviv. I was able to quit my law office and raise my kids and do my lifestyle and change. And what's happened in Israel since you did Ah, uh, you saw yesterday, but uh, it's, it's growing and it's soon, really soon, it's going to boom. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so this is a 9 or 10. Does that make sense? This is one of your 9s or 10s. This is one of the people that you typically would not call. Attorney, too busy, too successful, over 20 people in his office. There's no way he's going to do Jeunesse, correct? No way. You want to bet? First one to be a red apple. The first one to be a red apple. How many of you wouldn't mind to have sponsoring Iran before? How many of you wouldn't mind getting paid on everything he does? Make sense? Let me tell you, with me, I didn't have any time. 90 hours a week I was working. But my sponsor had enough insight to call me. She called me and took a shot at it. She didn't prejudge me. And I thank God for that because she changed my life and thousands of people's lives. She called what she felt was one of her best people. That best person, the first two days, my first 48 hours, I put 62 people in my living room. 62 people. All of those people made 100,000 or more, and this is 1996. I called my friends and said, get over to my house. 62 people. Six joined right away. Some of them were green apples. Some of them were rotten apples. To me, it didn't matter. I didn't care. Within 19 months, I replaced my real estate income. Within that time, I think about 90% of them ended up joining later. Does that make sense? But I built my entire group of teaching people, call everybody, but go after the nines and tens first. The nines and tens are the people that are going to make you the most money. One of your nines or tens will bring you the same income as 100 of your ones or twos. One of your nines or tens will bring you the same income. I was going to meetings because we started to build off nines and tens. We found our red apples were in the nines and tens. The people that were far too busy, far too successful, would never do it. We started to go to these people, right? And literally, as we went to these people, they were putting 20, 30, 40 people in a room. I was showing up within two days of them joining and there was 30 or 40 people in the room because they had influence over others. They had credibility. And most of those people joined just because this person joined. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what would you rather do? Show up to someone for a cup of coffee and try to convince them to become motivated because they need it in their life or show up to a room of 20 or 30 people where everybody joins just because that person's in. You want to go fab? Yeah, you do both. But... Give everybody the opportunity, but most people do not call these people. Most people prejudge their most successful people, and they already make a decision for them that they're not going to be interested. When actually, these are your red apples. Does that make sense to everybody? You do that. Let me tell you, the sky's the limit. I have on my phone, for anyone who wants to see it, I taught this to some of the diamonds in Los Angeles. You want to know how the group went from 40 to 500 in two weeks? That. They start calling people. The nines and tens that they never called. Those people started to come with two, three, five, ten people. Those people started to come with 15 people. And within two weeks, it went, and that meeting was just under 500 people where Scott and I did it for Super Saturday two weeks later. That happened. I'm getting texts, which I'll show any of you who want to see afterwards where some of these leaders are talking about Asia. I mean, one of them, uh, Emily, went to, went to Asia. She's talking, and one of her big leaders, I think it was Shanghai in, in China, was frustrated because she'd been involved, and she felt like she was running out of people. So she did. the leader, Emily, did what I taught her to do. She asked the right questions. She found, nine, she found the person to a whole group of nines and tens, and the person already had, out of five phone calls, two red apples that joined within 24 hours. Does that make sense? And I'll show you the text. I was in Los Angeles, and I was doing a leadership training. And I was teaching this. And 
one of the women who's one of the leaders in Los Angeles got a very funny look on her face. And I started to kind of figure out what was happening. She was thinking about all the nines and tens she did not call. Now, this is one of the top leaders in the company, right? And she's sitting there looking at me. And I said, okay. I go, let me ask you a question. I go, what do you do for, for your business? And she said, I've been retired for 10 years from the insurance industry. So here's somebody who financially had retired and had been retired 10 years. And I said, okay, why are you doing Jeunesse? And she said, I love the products and it's a new challenge for me. And I love the people. And I said, okay. And I taught this, right, just before. And I said, let me ask you a question. Who do you know right now that's one of your nines or tens, one of your best people that you are sure would never do this business? And she gave me the name of her friend. And I said, what does he do? She says, he has 30 insurance agencies across Southern California. And I go, would he listen to this? She said, he would probably join just because I'm in. And I said, why didn't you call him? She said, I didn't think about it. The reason she didn't think about it is our brain will do more to avoid pain than to seek pleasure. And to most of us, we have a perception that the most successful people we know won't be interested and they won't listen to us. So we won't even remember to call them. We won't even remember their names. If I tell you to make a list and just tell you to make a list, you'll list everybody, but you won't list your nines and tens. You'll block them out. So I started to ask her question after question. Who do you know that could put 30 people in a room? Who do you know that makes too much money that would never do this? Who's a person that's the best salesperson you know? Who's the person that is the most credibility? Who's the person that has the most influence over others that you know? Who's the person that everybody goes to to get the answers to just about everything? You all have one of those. Everybody asks this person questions, whether it's where to get the best deal on a mattress, best deal on a car, freshest fruit. Someone, you know, we all have those people. As I was doing this, we came up with a list of 30 names within about three minutes that she hadn't even thought of. And then I asked the big question. I said, You're, you've been in insurance, right? She said, yeah, 30 years. How many clients do you have? And she looked at me and she said, 5,000. I said, you have 5,000 clients that trusted you with their life insurance, their auto insurance, everything. They trusted you. You did all their financial planning for them, and you haven't called these 5,000 people that will listen to you? She's like, no. I'm like, what are you going to do now? She's like, call them, <laughs> right? So, the nines and tens are people that, if you call them, you will be shocked at how fast they get involved. Now, here's the strategy. For every new representative, for every new distributor, or for every person, whether you've been in one month, one year, two years... This is a strategy. What do we do? 10 best, 10 easiest. 10 of the people you think will never do this business because they're far too successful, they make far too much money, they don't have any time, like Iran, like me, like most of you, okay? Identify those people right away. The second thing is the 10 easiest. The 10 best, the 10 easiest in the first 48 hours. We have to get them a check, we have to get them income. We have to build their belief. Now, what happens? You're going to get at least two distributors and usually two customers if you do this in the first 48 hours. So what do we do? We duplicate this, the same thing. The new distributors get started, 10 best, 10 easiest, 48 hours. Boom, boom. 10 best, 10 easiest, 48 hours. And this continues. See, most, most of the people make the mistake. They get a new rep started. Let's say today is Monday, right? And let's say you want to get started as a new rep. Most people do this. Most people say, okay, I'll tell you what. Let's get together. Let's go together on Thursday. I'll go over everything with you, and then we'll get started. How many of you know have seen this? You put it off two or three days, right? No. Guess what I'm doing? I'm getting them started now. When are they the most excited? Right now. When are they most willing to go talk to people? Right now, right when they see the business. When are they the most confident? Right when they see the business. We used to get people started right after the presentation. We would do a 35 to 40 minute presentation. Then 
we would do a quick start training with the apples for 10 minutes, and then we would get reps started right there. And at that point, we had people calling their best and their easiest the same night. So the next day, guess what we're doing? We're already getting people into their business within 24 hours. We're already getting people going in their business. What happens to their belief if they see something happen in the first day or two? Their belief goes up. What happens to their confidence? It goes up. What happens to the amount of work they're willing to do? It goes up. The faster you do this, the faster we go. Most people would tell new reps, let's get started, we'll get, let's get together in the next couple days. Me, I already had 10 people in your business in two days. Does that make sense? By the time you're wanting to meet with the people, I've already got 10 people in your group and I'm already going. Now, you want to cause geometric growth? This is how you do it. 10 best, 10 easiest, 48 hours. 10 best, 10 easiest, 24 to 48 hours. 10 best, 10 easiest, 24 to 48 hours. After the first 48 hours, they're going to continue to talk to people. They're going to continue to get customers, but you keep moving. Does that make sense to everybody? That causes what's called geometric growth. And eventually, you keep following this process, eventually you'll come down and you'll accidentally bump into a leader. You'll accidentally find somebody who's going to do this business, whether you do it or not. Whether you do anything or not, they're going to take off. Let me ask you a question. Who did your meetings for you? Yeah. You did the meetings at the beginning, right? Who did your calls for you? You did it. Who did everything? The training? He did it. See, when I got started, I told my upline, thank you very much for introducing me. You guys need to go talk to other people. I did the presentation. I did the training. I paid for the room. I did every three-way call. And from there on, it was game on. Does that make sense? How many of you wouldn't mind four or five workaholic leaders going crazy in your group underneath you? Right? Let me tell you. Where do you think you're going to find them? Uncle, Uncle uh, Avi? Or are you going to find the people that are going to go 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and will not stop until they hit their goals in your 9s and 10s? See, you go through your 10 best, 10 easiest, 10 best, 10 easiest, 10 best, 10 easiest. By the time you go through 30 or 40 or 50 of these best people, you're going to find somebody who wants to play. You're going to find somebody who's just not going to stop. They're just going to start doing the presentation. They're going to start doing the trainings. Victorine, perfect example. She's just going to start and she's not going to stop. You cannot stop her. I guarantee you, dare you to try to stop her. It won't happen. Presentations, calls, trainings. You run into someone like that and it's gone. You can't stop it even if you wanted to. Does that make sense to everybody?